almost towards the end of the season. So can you talk just a little bit about what the theme's going to be going into these last episodes? I think one interesting theme that comes up in these last few episodes is seeing some of our characters who may have been on opposite sides the beginning of the other part of the season having to be forced to band together in order for a common goal. And I think that is one of, that's one of the most fun parts for me of the last three episodes is, is seeing people who, who just plain up, that didn't like each other right. at the beginning and having to, having to kind of come together and seeing people who weren't in scenes together even just suddenly have to, have to, to, to work together. Yeah. And it's also sort of identifying the enemy within and without like you think you know who the bad guys are, but really they're also you know they're they're either motivations within you or like people you are close to. Um, and what we like about our finale too is like there are some complicated relationships that got started in the show. One of which is you know the relationship between Drake and Grayson. You know Drake was like a proud warrior, and Grayson was like the son of you know the the hate group the Red Hawks. And it starts at a very antagonistic place, and they it gets to a place where they're not like buddies, but there's an understanding between them. And by the time you get to the finale, you find, you know, like all these unexpected, you know, team, uh, you know, people banding together. Um, it's it, it's going to be massively explosive. I've been telling you. Both of us have been Our finale is so amazing. frustrated. I'm sorry, I feel you bad. Can't talk about I feel it. bad overselling it, but I can't oversell it. Right. <laughs> we're just like yeah. last season, last episode. We're anyway, we're signing to it. So who is it that gets power from passion in the season finale that's called Passion Wins the uh, Power? Well, it's, all, also, it's really all of our kids. It's all of our kids. And yeah. it's a, it depends where your passion lies. If your yeah. passion is for your cause, you know, yeah. that's what's giving you your power. If your passion is because you are part of an intergalactic <laughs> romantic coupling that you never thought was going to happen, yeah. you know, and, um, and that is sort of motivating you. Um, and also, you know, it's not, um, it, it's also about choice is that, you know, you, you can be... Um, one of the struggles that Roman has been going through for the first season is, you know, the struggle between does my, does my heart lie with my people? Does it lie with this, you know, this girl that I clearly have, you know, a bond with? And really sort of, like, spelling out how difficult that choice is. It's not as simple as, like, I'm going to follow my heart and, you know, hold her hand and everything will work out because that's, that's not how life is, you know? And fortunately, like, it works out well for our show. The drums <laughs> about the responsibility of being females in the sci-fi community and I mean what's, what's kind of response to you from that? Um, I feel like females are such a big part of the sci-fi community now yeah. like that it's not there's not this like oh it's like nerds or dudes and like right. it's Jane, be filled yeah. with that Right, Jane Espenson, I feel like, you know, broke down a lot of those initial barriers in terms of, like, not just being a player with, you know, sci-fi TV content, but being, like, you know, a major voice in it. So, yeah, I don't think I don't think it's been an issue at all. Um, I think, you know, if anything, that maybe perhaps, like, our... I wouldn't say failing. It's, like, um, our more propensity is to maybe, like, dip more into, like, the relationships and, the, you know, and that sort of, like, sexual tension. Um, and But we think that plays great with the boys, too. So. <laughs> but also, like, and, like, strong female, like, sci-fi characters and right. so much more, like, Katniss and, you know, the list goes on and on. But, like, I think that being a big part of it and also Emery. <laughs> Emery is, like, our, bat is our, like, badass, even though she's a human. Like, we love the idea of her being, she's kind of a badass and almost growing her as our own little mini superhero. So, from that part of it, and I feel like there's, there, yeah. for us, there wasn't any, like, oh, like, What's it going to be like? But no, and I think the, 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 we might have been influenced with it a couple of key times, like our character of Vega, which was initially written for a male character, and then when you know we someone came up with the idea, well maybe it could be a woman, and Merle Dandridge, you know, showed up, who was amazing. We didn't change the name of the character, what that person did, and she played it so amazingly well. It blows my mind that we didn't think of Vega as being a female yeah. to begin with. And if you look at our other characters, we have some of like the hardest core. Or like bombs uh, in sci-fi with um, Drake's mother, with um, Vega, and even Roman's mother. Gloria. That, yeah, Gloria. They're tough. They're kind of dangerous, you know, and it's it's fantastic. <laughs> All right, I'm going to steal them now. We've got Matt and Amy coming for you okay. guys. Thank you.